as self-directed learning becomes a more commonplace and well-used term, as educators it is important for us to understand a lot of misconceptions and myths that may be floating around about this style of learning. One of the first is that people often think self-directed learning is an all-or-nothing concept. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. In fact, learners in formal settings exhibit varying degrees of self-directedness along a continuum which ranges from very high dependency on an instructor to being almost completely autonomous from an instructor, relying on them as more of a mentor or a consultant. Another myth about self-directed learning is that it is an easy way out for teachers. You need something. In formal education settings, Self-directed learning requires active involvement from instructors to guide learners in identifying goals and strategies and also in assessing the learning. Another myth that might be common is that self-directed learning is the best approach for teachers. Huh. What are your methods? As with any method or theory, we must recognize that it has limitations and is not appropriate in all situations. Additionally, as we have discussed in our class and in others, it is beneficial to consider and employ a variety of methods when appropriate for the given learning scenario and environment. Another myth to address might be that self-directed learning implies learning in isolation. In fact, SDL can be and is integrated into structured and formal learning settings and environments through a variety of activities and assignments. And as discussed previously, self-directed learning does require often the interaction or intervention of an instructor or a facilitator. Are you going to teach us anything, or are we just going to sit here? Just do whatever you want. Mm -hmm.